today I thought I'd paint um, three really simple miniature beach scenes. We're going to have one in the daytime, one at sunset and one in the evening. But keep it really simple and not add a lot of detail in there and just get um, the nice colours of each one. So I have masked out my paper. It doesn't really matter what size you do this. Um, I've just made it so it's fairly even. But you can do this any size. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is just mark out a couple of lines on my tape here just so I can see where the sea and the sky is going to be. So we're going to split this into three parts. We're going to have the sky in the top third, sea in the middle third, and then you've got your sand at the bottom. And it doesn't really matter, it doesn't have to be perfect. So let's just put a little line in there and then a little line down there. Ish. I will list the colours used in the description box below so you can see which colours are used for each painting. And first off, I'm going to start with some masking fluid. If you don't have any masking fluid, don't worry because you can use gouache or acrylic at the end if you prefer. So we'll start by adding a teeny tiny semicircle for the sun. I'm purposefully keeping it small so we can put yellow and orange around it because we only want one tiny part of that to be white. And same again on this side, we're going to do a tiny circle, a full circle this time for the moon and put it kind of in the middle of that sky section. And then we're also going to use the masking fluid to draw some teeny tiny ripples on the surface of the water that you want to keep as thin as possible just so they don't look too chunky and out of place. So we'll start with painting number one in the daytime. We're going to start out with some clean water which we'll put all the way across this little painting here um, and then we'll add all the colours to that. It's useful to have your colours ready to go so you can paint directly onto it rather than having to mix and then your paper is probably going to dry. But we're just going to wet all the way down and then add those colours in in a moment. So we're starting out with some French ultramarine blue for the sky and we're just going to drag that down all the way to the horizon and it is the simplest sky out of all three paintings. It is just French ultramarine blue and nothing else. And now for the sea I'm taking turquoise blue and just dragging that all the way down to the front of that section of sea which is going to be a little bit of a wave on the beach so I'm making a wavy line there for that. All turquoise blue to begin with and then next I'm going to add some viridian green in with that turquoise blue and just add that to the back of the sea but I'm not dragging that green colour all the way to the front I'm leaving that front area a little bit lighter and just turquoise blue. I'm using a less watered down mixture to create some darker areas of the sea. So same colours as before, I'm using turquoise and viridian green mixed together to create that nice dark line on the horizon and also just put in a few details into the sea as well so it's not just one block of colour. In the front I will make a darker area of turquoise for the waves but I'm not adding any green in that, I'm keeping that separate and I'm just making sure that the horizon stays a nice straight line and you don't have um, the sea bleeding up into the sky. And I'm using yellow ochre for the sand 
and then I'm gonna cover over the sea in the sky with some paper towel and just splatter some burnt sienna into that sand as well just to get a bit of texture. While this uh, paper is still wet, I'm going to use my brush just to lift some colour around the waves and creating these little curvy shapes which are going to be the waves on the beach. Just nice soft gentle waves and we're lifting out some of that colour and just making it a bit lighter on the crests of the waves there. And we'll add a bit more turquoise on the base of the waves because it's going to be a bit darker towards the bottom and it's going to get lighter as you move up. So we're going to leave that first painting to dry a bit before we add on final details. And for the second one we're going to start in the same way by just using clean water to wet all of that paper so that way when we add the paint it's going to blend together really nicely. You want to make sure that the masking fluid that you used is completely dry before you do this step. So we're going to start by adding some cadmium yellow right around the sun in a little circle. And then we're also going to drag that cadmium yellow in a line along the horizon and we're also going to add it into the sea as the reflection in a similar way that we added the ripples for the moon in masking fluid we're going to start out thicker at the back closer to the sun and then just taper it out as you get closer to the beach adding in some cadmium red to that cadmium yellow and that's going to be the next layer and I'm following the shape of that circle around the sun to begin with and then we're going to um, same again just draw a line along the top of the horizon there and even it out as we go up and we're going to do the exact same thing in the water and just add that around this yellow area you can do a couple of lines through so it blends nicely but we're just building up colors one at a time Now I'm adding some rose madder hue to that cadmium red and cad yellow and we're making a nice pink line just above the orange and we'll add that pink colour into the sea as well. And now even more of that pink colour so even more rose madder hue so it's almost purely pink and we're going to add that as a line on the top and then also put um, some of that in the sea starting further back and then working our way towards where the sand's going to be just drawing a couple of lines through so we've got a nice blend of colors Now for the area where the waves reach in the beach, I thought it'd be quite nice to add a little bit of purple in there as well. So I added some turquoise to that rose madder hue that we had just to create a little bit more of a purple tone, keeping it nice and watered down and I'm just adding that on the front and putting a couple of lines further back so it ties all those colours together. And for the sand, I'm using yellow ochre mixed with the purple from the wave colour just to create a slightly darker tone for the beach of our sunset painting. So again I'm going to leave that second one to dry and we're moving on to the third and final one for the first layer, starting exactly the same using clean water just to wet the whole of that paper and then we can drop the rest of the colours into that. So 
So I want to add a bit more interest to this night sky and make it a little bit more purple rather than just greys. So I'm going to start out with some mauve, but you can make your own purple if you like. You can use crimson and ultramarine to make a nice purple or whatever you've got to hand. But I'm starting with mauve. I'm adding a little bit of French ultramarine blue in there as well, just to get a nice purpley mixture. And then we're going to just cover the whole of the sky in that color, bringing it all the way down to the horizon line and go all the way over. And I'm going to darken that mixture for the next step. I'm going to add even more mauve and more French ultramarine and we're going to make it darker just by adding slightly less water to that mixture. And when I add that to the paper, I'm going to put it mostly around the edges, leaving a lighter circle just around the moon, which is going to be a bit lighter because of the glow of the moon. So the next step is to add some Payne's Grey to your purple mixture and just build that up again on the outside working in but leaving the centre as light as possible. You can drag a few lines of that colour across um, and they'll kind of look like clouds. So we're starting with the grey mixed in with that purple mixture and then eventually we'll just go to the pure Payne's Grey on its own right around the edges for a really dark border. And then when we move on to the C, we're going to use the same colours again, um, starting out with that mauve and ultramarine blue and then darkening it and then adding some Payne's Grey at the end. But we're repeating the process so the C looks like a bit of a reflection of what you can see in the sky. And for the sand, this time we're using burnt umber as the base and mixing in a little bit of that purple grey mixture that we had for the darker areas of the sea. And then I'm going to bring that up almost so it's touching the wave, but just leaving a tiny little edge to it so you can see a highlighted area just around the wave. So now it's time to revisit each painting and we're just going to add a few uh, finishing touches to them. Nothing too overly complicated because we want to keep these as simple as we can. I'm starting out with some turquoise and viridian green for this just to add in some lines along that horizon there so you can see a few ripples in the sea. We're starting out with really thin lines at the back and then as you get close to the beach they're going to get a little bit more spaced out and they're going to get um, a little bit thicker as well. So I'm going to use a darker turquoise just to outline the base of these waves and they're going to get lighter as they go up. I'm also going to bring that darker colour around the edge of the sea, just where it meets the sand. 
eventually I'm going to add some white gouache on here for some highlights so I want it to be quite dark closer to the sand and that way the gouache is going to stand out a little bit more. So I thought it'd be quite nice to put a tiny little seashell at the front corner of each of these paintings. So for this one I'm going to use yellow ochre for it and that's going to form the base of the seashell. And we're not putting a lot of detail in here, I think you can kind of tell what it is even if you don't really do that much with it. So mainly yellow ochre, we're going to use some burnt sienna as well just for some shadows and for some extra detail on that shell as well. I'm using a bit of water just to blend out that line right at the back so it's nice and soft because it's in the distance you won't see that much detail over there. Um, and then once I've done that I'm going to use a really really watery Payne's Grey just to create some tiny little birds in the distance and I want it to be really watery so they're almost lost in that sky. I don't want them to stand out too much because they're going to look a bit huge and ridiculous. And now for the gouache, which I'm using directly out of the tube, I'm going to just put in some details around the top of these waves and I'm just highlighting every area that I think needs a little bit of sparkle. I'm also going to put a few dots of this in the horizon so you can see some tiny little sparkles on top of each crest of wave and I might put a little bit of turquoise as well into that sea spray just to make it a little bit more um, vibrant and interesting. Real finishing touches now for this one, just using some yellow ochre to create a little bit of shadow underneath that foam on the front of the wave and a little bit of shadow behind the seashell and a few final splats of colour.
so our first painting is pretty much done and now we're on to finishing touches for the sunset painting we're going to do a really similar thing to what we did in the first one where we're going to add ripples onto the sea but this time we're going to use colors that are appropriate for the sunset so some cadmium red tiny bit of cadmium yellow and some of that rose madder hue as well and same principles before just starting out with thin lines at the back and getting a little bit bigger as we move further towards the sand and as we get into that purple area we're going to add a little bit of purple to um, those lines as well. Now for another seashell, this one I'm starting out with burnt sienna and maybe some burnt umber just to do the shadow around the edges, so just slightly darker than the seashell that we did in painting number one. And now for some gouache for those lovely highlights just to finish it off. Uh, this one is slightly more watered down so it's not going to be as bright. And then I'm going to use white gouache straight from the tube just to add some really sparkly highlights. So I'm just adding a darker purple line underneath the edge of these waves just to create a bit of shadow like we did in the first painting. So you'll notice that we're kind of repeating the process each time but just changing the colours so they're suitable to each scene. So that's our sunset painting pretty much finished and we're moving on to the third one. You might notice that this looks a little bit different to how I left it um, and that would be because I forgot to film this part. <laughs> I decided it was a little bit um, too light so I wanted to darken everything up a bit. I, to do that I waited until the painting was completely dry and then I re-wet the area with um, clean water, so I re-wet the sky and the sea and then I added um, colours to that, very similar to the colours that I added the first time around because I was just wanting to add an extra layer. So I started with purple and then I added in Payne's grey and just darkened that whole area up. And we're rejoining here where I'm just finishing off that section and once I've done that we'll leave it to dry and then add in finishing details.
So I left that second layer to dry and now I'm adding in those ripples that we did with the first two paintings. This time mainly paints grey with a bit of purple mixed in um, and I'm just repeating the process, same as what we did before. I also realised that I forgot the seashell as well, <laughs> so I didn't record that. Um, that one is burnt umber. The seashell is made out of burnt umber and then um, slightly darker around the edge just to create that shadow again. <laughs> I'm using Payne's Grey just under the edge of the wave. Uh, same again, just making that nice little shadow underneath just to give it a bit of dimension. And then we'll almost be onto the gouache. To begin with, I mixed in the gouache with some Payne's Grey and, and that bluey purple colour just to make it a little more grey and put that around the edge of the waves. And then I added um, white gouache straight from the tube to do the sparkly highlights on top of that and to um, just make it look a bit more 3D. I decided to add in some more obvious clouds in this one just for some more interest in the sky. So I'm starting out with Payne's Grey just to put in some darker shapes of the clouds. And then I'm gonna use my white gouache to highlight the edges that are closest to the moon. So you can see where the moon's glow is kind of hitting those clouds. So we're really almost finished with this now. Um, all that's left to do is remove the masking fluid and then the tape around the edges, which is always my favorite part. Uh, you can see the way the masking fluid's removed on that sunset that it just makes it pop and it really brings that painting together. And same again for the moon. I'm trying to remove this really carefully. I don't wanna cause any, any tears to the painting. And same again with those sparkly highlights on the surface of the water there, which looks really pretty, I think. And then it will be time to remove the tape from around the edges, which is always really satisfying. And then we can see all three paintings all together. And here they are all finished. I'm really pleased with how these turned out. They're a really nice simple design to try. You could definitely make them more complicated if you wanted to. You could add some more detail or refine them a little bit um, or just keep them super simple. They're a really nice way to practice painting working on a small scale before you move on to a larger painting. You could keep these together on the same page but I decided to cut them out and make little watercolour bookmarks and I think they look really nice like that. Um, thank you so much for watching. I will be back again next Wednesday with another watercolour tutorial.